Hello and welcome to the series about implementing home automation system that uh, is shared on GitHub and this bit is a part of the series explaining what devices we will use to actually control our power, our uh, radio operated power switches. So for this we are using those cheap uh, radio transmitters and receivers um, that we can buy everywhere, they are almost uh, everywhere the same and they always cost quite little so uh, we have these square uh, transmitters and rectangular receivers um, they go by different names um, I think they are usual name XY FST uh, for the transmitters or XD FST or like this one is um, I'm not sure if this is visible 2008-8 and but to my knowledge, I think they are all the same. I'm not sure if there are any differences between them. I actually used the, um, all of those mentioned and they seem to work exactly the same. And they also seem to have same parameters. Um, they operate on different frequencies, uh, like uh, I think uh, 315, 330 and 433 megahertz. I have uh, used them for the uh, for the last one so to operate devices that use 433 megahertz and they work without any problems so um, you usually buy those in pairs so uh, for one purchase you get both of these devices uh, for our automated uh, home automation system you will definitely need the square one so transmitter to send uh, on and off signals and uh, receiver you will use more seldom it will be used just to learn the code from remote controls so maybe let's start with a radio transmitter it's uh, the square one it has three pins the uh, vol voltage pin on the left uh, ground pin on the right and just one data pin in the in the middle uh, in in the specs, this transmitter operates in a quite wide range of voltage, so we can power it from, I believe, uh, three volts to twelve volts. But from my experience, it actually works best uh, on five volts. So we will connect it to five volts. The other one is a, a radio receiver. This one has four pins, uh, so we have a voltage on the right, a ground on the left, and two middle pins are actually data pins, and doesn't matter which one you use, I think they are bridged, so they, uh, they, they, they simply uh, output the same signal. Not sure if, why there are two, it doesn't really matter which one you will connect to. So if you are going to use radio controlled switch power switches with your home automation system these two uh, are the core of how you control them because you will definitely need the transmitter to transmit the signals and in case uh, how it will work you will simply know the transmission code uh, you will then input the transmission code into the configuration of, of home automation system so this um, code will be assigned to some device you want to operate through your home automation system and then this code will be translated in the radio signal and sent by this transmitter to the device in case you don't know what the code is for because for example you have some power switches which you operate with your remote control then first what you will have to do is to simply read signal from the remote control uh, so you can learn the code and for this you will use the radio receiver and then you will uh, simply um, save this code and uh, input it into the configuration of home automation system so it can be later sent by the radio uh, transmitter and how to do this we will talk about this in probably next next bit uh, so uh, the D 
the range of this um, of transmitter and receiver is very limited as you can see they have no not any antenna attached to them even though there is a possibility to attach antenna and you will need to do this actually um, we, without the antenna the uh, range is very limited it's, it's like one or two meters at uh, most and uh, for the transmitter in from this perspective you can see the upper right corner there is a place when you can solder the antenna and for the receiver when you look from this side the right bottom part is where you solder the antenna if you if you have need for this because um, for for the transmitter it will be a necessity to to attach antenna to it for receiver not so much not so much because uh, receiver in most cases will be just used to read uh, codes for uh, from remote controls and you will just need it to do it once just to learn the code and then you won't have use for for the receiver um, to show you an example of antenna this is a uh, very compa compact antenna that can be um, it, it um, enhances range quite a lot so with this antenna I think the range is at least 10 meters and for example in uh, uh, 50 meters flat it covers almost all flat mm. and uh, with this kind of antenna you can just uh, uh, keep this device in some smaller compact box uh, wh what you use for antenna is usually a copper wire which is one millimeter or one and a half millimeter thick and uh, how, how you shape your antenna is up to you there is a lot of stuff on Google describing which uh, are the best um, uh, however from my experience the best antenna actually is a straight copper wire uh, one and a half millimeter thick which is uh, about 17 centimeters long from my experience these antennas have a uh, best range however if you have smaller space to cover antennas such as this is uh, quite enough uh, to give you an example this is uh, a compact box and the compact size and inside of this box i have a transmitter and also receiver both with antennas and this is all inside of this box uh, which is very easy to connect to Raspberry Pi and uh, it will without any problems cover um, the biggest uh, room but this is just a let's say um, a remote box I usually and just um, take it if I want to use radio transmissions in some smaller areas for bigger areas uh, I usually use those 17 centimeters straight um, antennas so this is the basic stuff this is what you need uh, transmitter receiver uh, we will connect them to Raspberry Pi in a minute and uh, just to re remind you uh, we will use them with our home automation system that this video is uh, about the, the, the part of uh, it's this video is a part of series about the home automation system but these transmitters you can use also with other scripts uh, for example there is a library RF sniffer on the github which utilizes these devices to send uh, trans uh, to transmit codes and also to read the codes now we'll connect these to our Raspberry Pi and in a later bit we'll uh, I will show you how to operate them, um, operate with them the radio controlled power switches. Uh, so we have some cables here. We will need three cables per each uh, device. So we will use brown ones for ground, white ones for, for power and the colored ones for, for data. So let's start with our transmitter so ground power and data 
and the same for uh, for our receiver route. Power data. Okay, so they are connected. Transmitter has a orange cable for data and receiver has uh, yellow for data Doesn't, uh, for the receiver doesn't matter for, uh, to which data pin you actually connect they they are the same and here is our Raspberry Pi which will use um, which will use for our bits so the we will connect both of these devices to 5 volts and as a pin uh, we will use for transmitter data pin uh, uh, pin number 11 which is GPIO 17 and for the receiver pin we'll use pin number 13 which is GPIO uh, 27 so let's start with data pins pin number 11 is uh, this one, sixth from the right, pin number 13 sits just next to it. Okay, power, of course, we connect to 5 volts. And ground. We'll use the ground um, from pin number thirty-four, and the other ground from pin number thirty. Okay. Which ground pin you use is up to you. Doesn't really matter. Um, I use pin uh, data pins uh, 11 and 13 because my scripts are uh, simply configured for these pins. If you use scripts that are configured for something different, then you will use different pins. And also for power, uh, so transmitter has to work on 5 volts. From my experience, it's uh, the voltage that it works best with. And uh, receiver, however, can also work on 3.3 volts, and then it also works quite well. So, okay, so that's it for this one. And in the next one, I will show you how to, uh, what kind of uh, power switches we can use with those uh, transmitter and receivers, and how to read codes with transmitter to later send it with uh, receiver. How, sorry, just opposite. How to read codes with receiver to later send it with transmitter. So that's it. Thanks for watching and uh, take a look at next one.